Mr. Trudeau, you are a phony and you are a fraud and you do not deserve to govern this country. Do we go back to the failed policies of the Harper years and double down on Doug Ford with Andrew Scheer? And that's what we get from Mr. Trudeau. Lots of pretty words, but no action. But Conservatives want to bury their heads in the sand. The Green Party does not have a solid position on a number of issues that are very important to Canadians. At this point, Mr. Scheer, with all due respect, you're not going to be Prime Minister. Do you know who misled voters? Doug Ford. Trudeau thinks he can spend your money better than you can. Mr. Trudeau is going to try to scare you to settle for less. You do not have to settle for less. It's quite clear that Justin Trudeau would pay any price to stay in power. So I think Mr. Scheer was uh, hypocritical, but I don't think that's a surprise. <laughs> it's not a surprise. The Conservative Party is running one of the dirtiest, nastiest campaigns based on disinformation. But the ultimate judgment of a Prime Minister's contact is left to the people in an election. As you heard there, Liberal leader Justin Trudeau pointed a finger at the Conservatives, blaming them for the dirtiest, nastiest election campaign in Canadian history. Does that make sense? Let's discuss with the power panel, Chris, Marty, Rob, Tim and Kathleen. The comment came after essentially uh, Mr. Trudeau laid out that the Conservatives have the potential to win. And then he went on to say this has been a really nasty campaign. Do you think it has been an extraordinarily nasty campaign? Yes. Why? It's been a, no, it has not. Did you hear the same clips that I let just heard? Him uh, and I don't think these <laughs> clips. So let me let me put it two different ways. If you are not on social media, if you do, if you've never you logged on to social uh, media, yeah. yeah, then you see people uh, uh, <laughs> you dancing, still have faith da in dancing, dancing around, uh, holding hands, uh, singing hallelujah. Um, if you're not on social media, if you if you get your information, like most Canadians, um, organically, you watch the news. You obviously watch Power and Politics every <laughs> night from five to seven o'clock. Um, <laughs> then I don't know how much uh, nastier it truly is. This look, this is not a debating club. This is not tiddlywinks. This is not the croquet club. Political elections are supposed to be tough contests of ideas, and, and partisanship is not supposed to be happy fun. It's, it's, it's tough, and it, a lot's on the line. If you're on social media, if you're online, uh, part of that is just the growth of the nastiness of social uh, media. Part of, it is, part of it is, I think we can say without being particularly controversial at this point, part of it is foreign actors and outside actors pushing certain messages. And some of it is just lies about candidates, fake uh, uh, media. All of that has uh, conspired to have a uh, very nasty, um, icky election uh, campaign. It's different. We're in a different context than we were uh, previously. And uh, so, yeah, I do think it's the nastiest campaign. I, I do not think it's the nastiest campaign. First of all, I want to back up, and I, I've said this before on the show, that I, even the lead up to, about this campaign, people said, this is going to be the nastiest campaign ever we've ever seen in Canada. Well, and both people are Justin still Trudeau saying and it. Andrew Scheer said Yeah, and now the candidates are saying that. And first of all, it doesn't have to be that way. And saying it time and time again yeah, doesn't make it that way. Yeah. Um, so I would point to a couple even recent examples that Rob would remember himself. Like we can scroll back to 1993 and the Chrétien, the nasty ad that the Conservatives did about Chrétien which attacked his facial features, that was nasty, that was personal. We can go back to 1988, when basically John Turner called Brian Mulroney a traitor and said, you've sold out the country. We can go back to, I don't know, 20, 2004, I think it was, yeah. when, when the Conservatives called leader, liberal leader Paul Martin, um, a supporter of child pornography, you know, like these were nasty. These were low blows and these were candidate to candidate in most cases or party to candidate. So some of them were, were press releases. Those are nasty campaigns. We should at, in all and every case trying to be, elevate the debate. Now this is when I put my Pollyanna politics uh, <laughs> hat on and say that we should try to elevate the debate. And I, I, I don't disagree with what Rob is saying about what's happening on social in, on Twitter, and, and that there are some ugly statements, but are the parties, are the candidates themselves uh, creating this campaign that is the nastiest campaign? No, there's contrast. But there's two other things, right? It, it, I agree it's not the nastiest campaign ever. Uh, there's an appalling lack of political talent at the senior level of leadership because leaders today, second point, are trapped in a political marketing vortex. They are telling people it's nasty. They're telling people it's bad because there's political advantage in doing that. Because if you look like the least guilty, the least <laughs> culpable of yeah, all of this, right. then perhaps you curry favor. This is strategy. It's painful. It's boring. None of the 
these leaders are going to advance a bigger idea or a broad agenda for discussion because it doesn't work in the political environment in which we live and they're generally risk adverse to that sort of debate. That's also why it's easier to say it's nasty than describe it as thoughtful because there's no evidence to that. Rob is shaking his head. I'm going to get you back yeah. in a second. That's but okay. Chris, what do you think? I, I think it's been more personal. Um, the examples that Kathleen gave, I happen to think you sold us out, John Turner to Brian Mulroney, was a debate about a policy issue, about the future of the country and free trade. Uh, when Jack Layton told Michael Ignatieff, you know, you've got to show up for work before you can apply for the top job, it was about an attendance record. It was a point to be made there. I think a lot of what we've heard has been much more personal, a dislike that the leaders apparently have for each other or a belief that at least of showing your dislike for your opponent will help draw people into your camp. That's the first point. The second point is that there is a lot more uh, advocacy, third-party activity, which does not yeah. play by the normal rules that the political participants play in. And I think that's changed the tones. We don't think you have to see it only on social media. It's virtually everywhere. So in the end, is it any worse? No. Is it nastier? Probably not. But it, I think, is far more personal than I can remember. Marty? So I have to look at my watch. Uh, I, I, Why, do you have to I'm be old, somewhere? Or what? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, 2006, it was right around this time in the campaign in 2006 that Paul Martin and the Liberals put out an ad that said that there would be soldiers in the streets. That there's basically, we're, Liberals were fomenting, uh, we're going to, sorry, pardon me, the Conservatives were going to foment um, uh, martial, martial law if, you, if Stephen Harper and happened to be elected. they were not making that up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, to say this is nasty is absurd. Secondly, Mr. Trudeau used the term dis misinformation in there and talked about nastiness and all this. This is the same guy that burned through about four or five news cycles going on about Andrew Scheer and his position on abortion. When Andrew Scheer's position on abortion was near identical to Justin Trudeau's in circa 2011. So if you want to talk about misinformation, we can talk about it on both sides. Rob where I would vehemently where, shaking where, his head. I'll that's he, I, I'm, I'm super happy he's shaking his head. Uh, <laughs> uh, the third the third point where, where I agree with, with Rob, and, and it's, to, it's to Chris's point, is the stuff that is said about, and I, I'm going to, I isolate it with Mr. Trudeau because it's only basically happening to him, is the misinformation that began well before uh, uh, this election campaign uh, that sort of said that, you know, Mr. Trudeau wants to foment things like Sharia law and wants to do all this kind of stuff because he's a closet Muslim. Uh, this is the nastiest stuff I've ever I've seen, and certainly did not see this in 2015. This doesn't have any doesn't have much to do with any of the parties, but it's the it's the it's this kind of thing where you know there's almost a depersonification of, of of our prime minister, of the office of prime minister because he's occupying it and make him less of a person. And that this these kinds of this kind of caustic rhetoric has uh, examples as we saw has Just has, saw today, right? has potentially co consequences. At the conservative arena at the uh, at the arena sorry in the conservative announcement oh, called him a Cuban yeah. and, yeah. and to Mr. Shear's credit he which, said no let's stay. Which is which was uh, Mr. Shear, Mr. Shear did a very very good thing there. It reminded me of the time that uh, John McCain stood up and sort of said what he said about uh, Mr. Obama at the time. Uh, that's that's the kind of rhetoric that has potential consequences and the, the fact that we had a prime minister that had to come out in a in a flak jacket. Uh, during during a, a campaign a campaign stop uh, goes to show that this stuff has has potential consequences. Yeah. Do you know how many times the whole soldiers in the street ad ever aired? The answer is zero. It never aired. It immediately, it was it was a concept ad, but it never actually aired. It wasn't the a concept ad. ad. The, the, it, the, it, it was never not a aired. They ad. never they never put it on TV. Uh, the Cretan um, mouth ad was pulled within a day, twenty four yeah. hours of that. So, so yeah, there's been nastiness in campaigns. I'm not, I never said, and I'm not suggesting that this is a brand new feature, but the term nastiest implies by definition that it is worse than other uh, campaigns. It's not just folks on social media. If you count up the number of times organizations like the CBC, Canadian Press, and others have had to do fact checks on the conservative campaign and just come out and said things that Andrew Scheer is saying is just a an out-and-out out lie. It's not misleading. I mean, Marty brings up the, the, the abortion issue. Andrew Scheer's position is he is going to allow backbench MPs to have free votes the on abortion. The same as Stephen Harper. I don't want to argue that. It's the argue, same thing that. as Stephen Harper. It, say, the argument that it is not a legitimate argument, it's a policy issue. If you want to conclude that it's not a policy issue that should be a voting issue, that's fair. But that is materially different from putting out a press release, as the Conservative Party of Canada did, that repeats an online rumor that's garbage. I'm not going to repeat the rumor that was started by a blogger uh, and that was repeated by right wing media that was repeated I, I get all elsewhere. That, yeah. uh, the but notion that that would happen in other campaigns, that the leader think? of the party would not have disowned that immediately as opposed to the party pushing that. I disagree with this. And this this what about everybody else? Everybody's mean. Again, 
It's an election campaign. There's nothing wrong with being tough. Okay. There's nothing wrong uh, with challenging people on policy issues. Mm -hmm. There's not, that's, of course, something that should be a key feature of our election. Yeah. There's something materially different about the campaign the conservatives are running uh, in this election. Trudeau yeah. stands, but, but in fairness, though, Rob, when Mr. Trudeau stands up and suggests that Mr. Scheer is going to bring back abortion, as Marty said, that's not true. Mr. Scheer has been clear about that. You can talk about it. the arcania of what may happen in a House and a free vote, but he's been clear on that. You have Mr. Trudeau talking about in, in, in effect, his values are better than somebody else's. Well, that's equally negative and offensive. So call it out but for is what this, it is. Is this what anybody means when they're saying no, nasty? I don't like, think is that's what I, I think don't the debate think... over what people's positions are. Well, that is that. Yeah, nasty. I, though, I don't. Make... I don't think, mean from both sides. I mean in either case. I don't think that it serves us well to use this language of nastiness. I think that yeah. if what Rob is pointing out is that there are untruths in the campaign, that people are using misinformation or or trying to put falsehoods out there, they should be challenged as an un, un, as they are as unfactual. But by kind of blanketing this whole campaign as the nastiest or a nasty yeah. campaign, I actually think it does voters a disservice. I think it does politics a disservice. I think candidates a disservice. I think we should use better language when we're talking about these things. Contrast ads are important. Challenging people on policy is important. When we challenge Ignatieff, the example that uh, Chris just brought up right. on his attendance record, that's important because it goes towards character. But but just calling everything nasty, it's, it's not it's not fair. Well, I just want just quickly, Marty. Yeah, because I, I do want to tell our viewers about just how quick, we're waiting for Doug Ford to. to uh, just to just, just quickly to, to Rob, Rob's point about there being foreign actors put, pushing some of the stuff that I was talking about before the anti-Muslim stuff. The unfortunate thing, and I talked to a guy named Taylor Owen at McGill University. Uh, what he was saying that during this campaign, uh, the vast majority of the stuff that's coming in and, and uh, talking about that towards, directed towards Mr. Trudeau is Canadian born. It is not foreign actors. And that's the scary part for me. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.